What's up, bitches? I am back once more with part 8 of the FNAF fan game click -team tutorial series. So, as I promised back in my last video, I would be covering Foxy's AI, and this one will actually be a bit shorter because this AI isn't really as involved as the one I showed in the last video. Still, it's a very common type of AI that fan game devs use, so I'll still go over it. There isn't too, too much that can be done with optimization here, at least not in ways that are very big friendly so yeah we'll just get started by making an active object which is going to be the object for Foxy like we did in the previous video we're going to select all of the frames for Foxy here and just paste them to the object making sure that they're in the order we want them to be in now because Foxy only really appears in Pirates Cove we can just lay out all of the frames as is without making any kind of order to account for any of the other camera rooms we just need to make sure as always that this animation speed is set to zero. Once we do that, we're just gonna quick uncheck visible at start like we did with Bonnie. And then we're going to make an alterable value titled movement just like with Bonnie as well. Now normally this would be the part where you would make a new group for your animatronic, but because I'm stupid and didn't do that at first, all my code is just kind of sprawled out here in the beginning. Just make the new group for your Foxy S character first and then proceed as follows. Just ignore the fact that I forgot to add a new group for your first. Anyways, we'll make a new condition that checks for if our Foxy AI global value is greater than zero. You should have done this in the last episode, if not, then just go to your application settings, go to values, and then make an AI global value for your Foxy character. We'll also set this line to run once in the frame by adding a condition and selecting run this event once. Now we'll make an action that sets the movement value of Foxy to a certain value. So setting this up will follow a similar principle to how we set up Bonnie's in the last episode. So if you need a reminder on what I think is the best use of that, at least to start off with, go back to episode 7 and re-watch the part where I go into the specifics of setting up Bonnie's movement timer, but I'll just set it up for Foxy here. So the initial value will be like 1080 for me, which is about 18 seconds, and then subtracting this by Foxy's AI times the amplifier, I'll set this amplifier to 39, which will make Foxy move at around approximately 5 seconds at 20 AI. Now we're going to drag the condition checking for if Foxy's AI is greater than 0 to the next line and this is just going to continuously subtract 1 to his movement timer. These first few lines will be pretty similar to how we set up the movement with Bonnie. How Foxy moves will be different and it'll actually be much simpler since Foxy doesn't really move to any new rooms and when he does, we don't even need to use string parser or anything too fancy due to the nature of Foxy's AI. So lastly, we'll drag that Foxy AI condition to the next line again, then check if his movement timer is less than or equal to zero, and then add in a condition to only run the action once when it loops. Before we proceed with the action in this line, we're going to need to set up another alterable value in Foxy's object. This one is going to be called progress. This does exactly as you'd think. This will keep track of Foxy's movement progress in the cove. So for example, if this is 1, he'll be peeking out of the cove, 2 will be him ready to dash out, and 3 will be him having exited the cove. This will consist of however many frames your character has in the room. Foxy just so happens to have those 3, so keep that in mind. Otherwise, something that we should do just to make our lives the slightest bit easier is copy the frame of Pirate's Cove where the current is shut like this, and put this in the first frame of Foxy's object. We're doing this because even if Foxy hasn't moved yet and his object is visible, we won't have to check whether he's progressed at all to make him appear in the cameras, and this also lines up with how he'll appear in the progress values we were talking about briefly. So, zero will be him inactive, which lines up with the first frame, one will be him peeking out, etc. So it'll just line up with that value. Now let's go back to our event editor and just make another new condition in this line that checks for if Foxy's progress value is lower than the number of phases that he has. So for me in this case, it'd be three. Since progress equals three would be him having left the cove, which means his traditional movement timer has stopped for the most part. He'd be on his way into the office now. Now for our actions, we'll make Foxy add one to his progress value since he's moving on to his next phase. 
Now on a new line, we'll check for if the current frame of our camrooms object is equal to Pirate's Co. So this would be 2 in my case. And then check for if Foxy is invisible, so similar to Bonnie, we'll have Foxy reappear in this line as our action. We'll also copy this line and then just negate these two conditions as well as our action so Foxy disappears once we're off Pirate's Cove. I should also mention this now, but when you're testing Foxy, just make sure to have his actual global AI values at 20 or another value so that he'll actually be active. On line 56, in addition to making Foxy appear, we also want his animation frame to align with his progress. So we'll make a new action and set that frame to the value of his progress alterable value. Lastly, before we run the game here, we didn't actually update Foxy's movement timer to reset after he moves, so we'll just copy the action that sets his movement timer from line 54 here and paste it in that line where he progresses one stage. Now if we run the application, we can see that Foxy's visuals in the cove are updating properly. Now in FNAF 1, Foxy is never meant to progress while you're actually looking at him in cams, so we're going to follow a similar principle and make it so if Foxy is being stared at, he won't progress in his movement. So we'll add a new condition in line 55 where his movement timer depletes that checks if Foxy is invisible. This works out because not only will he be invisible anytime we're looking away from Pirate's Cove, but with this expression, if the camera's layer is invisible, that also means that Foxy himself is invisible. So we won't be able to like camp him in Pirate's Cove or anything, even if the cameras are down. So now if we look at our little debugger here, we can see that Foxy's movement stops completely if we're looking right at him in cams. Now, when it comes to really fending Foxy off, we also want to make it so that the player is rewarded by looking at him. So what I'm going to do now is make it so that some of Foxy's progress is actually set back whenever the player looks at him. So I'm first going to make a condition, a new line, checking for if Foxy's visible. Then check for if his progress is lower than 3, because remember, if his progress is equal to 3, that means he's out of the cove, so his normal movement wouldn't be affected if we were just looking at the curtain wide open and Foxy missing from it. Now for the action in this line, rather than subtracting Foxy's movement timer, we're going to proceed to add a value to Foxy's timer, and this will be a smaller number, say 0.4. We can always change this to something else later. But the idea is make it so some of his movement is added onto, but not really as much as his movement timer would normally go down by. So from here, we're going to begin setting up Foxy's AI once he's left the cove. The first thing we need to do is establish his timer for when he's entering the office, which we'll make a new alterable value for and call kill timer. Now in our event editor, we'll make a new condition that checks if Foxy's progress has reached 3. So when this progress value is equal to 3, it'll continuously add 1 to Foxy's kill timer. Now there are two separate scenarios for Foxy when it comes to him getting into our office. Either he takes his time and checks the left door on his own, or we see him in the West Hall which sets him to check the left door after like a second and a half. For that second scenario, this is going to require us to import Foxy's running animation into our Camrooms object. Here is the issue though, because this is a genuine animation that has like a ton of frames, we'll need to import this in a completely separate animation. So on this left bar here that's labeled as animations, if we right click here, we can make a new animation and we'll just call this Foxy Run. After this, we'll import the frames of Foxy running in the West Hall. So once the animation is properly implemented, we're going to exit out of the Camrooms object and return to our event editor. Here we'll make a new line by dragging the Foxy progress equals 3 condition into a new line and then adding another condition that checks for if the Camrooms is visible, then looking to see if the current frame of the Camrooms object is equal to the West Hall or 3 for me. Now before going on with our action, we do want to make a flag that checks if we've seen Foxy in the hall yet. The reason for this is because we only want Foxy to run down this hall once, so we'll make a new flag called Seen Foxy. 
Now for our last condition in this line, we'll just check for if scene foxy is off. Now in our actions, we'll change the animation sequence itself of our camera rooms object by navigating to animation, change, animation sequence, and then clicking on our foxy run animation. We'll then set our foxy scene flag as on so that the same animation doesn't play again. We'll also, in a new line, want to check when Foxy's kill timer has exceeded a certain value. I decided to go for 600 or 10 seconds, so put in a new line a condition that checks for if his kill timer is greater than or equal to 600. This is just to set up code for checking the doors, we won't really add on to this right now. The reason I set this up is because I want to set Foxy's kill timer in the line above to be a second and a half behind the 600 threshold, so that'd be 510 for me. Again, you can set this to another value if you'd like, I just think setting it to 510 would be a good reaction time amount for the player. Now if we run the game as the code is set up right now, you'll notice that when Foxy is spotted in the hall, the animation is stuck on the first frame. The reason why it is, is because we've forced the animation frame of the previous animation, and this causes a weird property with animations in Click Team, where even if we switch to an entirely new one, the frame is essentially frozen in time, even with the new animation speed being greater than zero. So in order to reset this, we need to make a new action right before the animation in the cam rooms object is set to foxy run. We'll go to the cam rooms object and navigate to animation, restore, and then click on animation frame. So this will essentially unfreeze the frame and allow the animation speed to play properly whenever foxy is seen in the hall. Now when we run the game, Foxy's animation plays properly, but it actually reverts back to the stopped animation as soon as it ends, which we don't really want since it looks really jarring. So to prevent this, we just go back to our cam rooms object, go to the direction options, and we're going to check this loop option, and then having this back to value set to the last frame of the animation, which in my case will be 31. So this will essentially prevent the foxy run animation from being reset back to the default animation when it's over. Now the last step that we need to complete is to make it so each time we switch to a new room in the cameras to revert our animation into the default stopped animation. So in the line in our cameras group, when we click on a cam button, we're just going to add in an action that changes our cam room's animation sequence to stop. After this, it will revert the animation back to how it was before. So now the animation for the hall properly plays and then resets upon going to a different camera. Now, just before we proceed onwards, I just want to real fast add in a condition to Foxy's movement timer subtracting line here by dragging in a condition that checks if Foxy's progress value is lower than 3, just so that way when he's left the cove, his normal movement timer can't proceed as normal. Okay, we're ready to move on to the code where Foxy checks the left door once his kill timer has reached 600. Remember, if we don't check Foxy in the West Hall at all, then he'll check the left door on his own after 10 seconds have passed after him leaving Pirate's Cove. So first, we're going to check the condition where the left door is open, so we'll add in a new condition that checks if the left door button's door status flag is off. We'll also want to run this event once because when this line succeeds, Foxy will jump scare us and so it'll be rigged to only run one time in the entire frame. Now under our actions, we'll set Foxy's progress to 4, which means that he successfully entered the office. Now under normal circumstances, you would put in the rest of the code for you know the jump scare and whatnot, but since I'm holding off on doing the jump scares right now, we're just going to leave this line how it is and move on to the other scenario of Foxy's kill timer running out, which is when he checks the left door and it's closed. So we'll copy and paste this line, negate this second condition to check if the door status flag on the left door buttons is on, 
And then we'll also want to replace this condition with an only one action when event loops, since unlike the previous line, this event can and should run multiple times throughout the night. Now in this line, we're going to reset Foxy's progress all the way back to zero, as well as reset Foxy's kill timer value to zero as well, so that the next time Foxy gets out of Pirate's Cove, he doesn't just check the left door immediately. So that's actually all we need to do for Fox's code here because everything else is reset or accounted for. You can see in my footage that when Foxy is hit by the door, he resets back to Pirate's Cove and repeats the process all over again. The last thing we want to do is incur a penalty onto the player for letting Foxy at the door. Normally this is just taking some power away, so what I'm going to do is in the code in my power group that subtracts 1% from my power left, we will want to take the actions in that line that subtract 1 to power remaining, as well as the code that visually changes that string and paste it into the line where Foxy rams into the door. Of course, make sure that the string visual change action is put below the action that subtracts the power as we want that change to visually update right away. I'm just going to real quick also make Foxy's movement adding itself when you're watching him a higher value since I feel like it'll make watching him to avoid that power drainage more worthwhile. This is also the part of my footage where my slow ass brain finally realized that I forgot to put in a new group for Foxy's code, so that's me doing that right now. And believe it or not, we are already done. The only thing that didn't get programmed is the jump scares, but again, I'm thinking about saving those until after we get done with the rest of the AIs. Otherwise, that's everything else pretty much finished. Uh, thank you guys for watching, I hope you all enjoyed. And I don't know what I'm going to make the next part of, admittedly. Uh, I think that should be up to you guys. Let me know what you guys want to see next. If you want to see another type of AI, if you want to see how to do the other screens, even though they're all like really simple. The only screen that I think is definitely worth going over is the custom night screen just for the optimization, especially if you plan on having a lot of CN presets in your game. There's a tactic that makes setting up presets pretty optimized though advanced, so we'll get to that when we get to it. But otherwise, yeah, please tell me in the comments what you'd like for me to cover next in the series. I'm open to whatever, honestly. So yeah, see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.